What's up sports fans, welcome back for some more Fusion Quick Tips. I'm Sadi, and today we're going to look at some more beginner friendly tips and tricks to take your game to the next level. From Fusion Novice to Fusion Ninja, let's jump in. Tip number 15, Spline Editor Versatility. Let's take a look at this comp. So we have these circles growing into a transition. Let's look at the circle that's generating all the duplicates. And we can see that there's this animation going on. If you click on the Spline Editor, and click on whatever node has the animation in it, you can activate the splines. So here you can see visually what the splines are doing and you can edit the splines here. But you can use the spline editor to edit any kinds of splines. In this composition, we have some particles. Let's say the particle emitter has an effect for blur over life or a size over life. And you can see that I have the blur increasing as the life goes on for the particle. Well, you can work with this graph in this uh, small window, or you can use the spline editor to pull this up. And here, as you can see, I have my blur over life graph in the spline editor. Here's another example. I have a color curves node applied to this footage. And if you click on it, you can see that I've worked with the red uh, channel. If you wanted to work with this spline in the spline editor and not this small window, just go to spline and fit. And now you can use those curves in the spline editor with all the tools at your disposal. Nifty, huh? Tip number 16, renaming multiple nodes at the same time. Here we have a simple wipe transition. And as you can see at the top, you have these nodes. They will have these default names, 1-1, 1-1-1, and so on. Let's say you want to rename them to shape one, shape two, shape three, shape four. Instead of renaming one at a time, what you would do is hold down control, click on the first node that you want to rename, the second one, then the third one, hit F2, and now you can rename multiple nodes quickly. Tip number 17, keyboard navigation. You can choose different nodes, uh, not just with your mouse, but also with your keyboard. If you click on this node and hit the down arrow key, you can navigate from node to node, as long as these nodes are connected. It does not work horizontally to the next node over because those are not connected. Tip number 18, quick attach nodes. Let's look at this composition. So you have this simple transition going on. If you wanted to add an effect in the middle of this composition, instead of taking your output and putting it on the node, and then bringing it into the next one, what you could do is just simply hold down the shift key and just bring it in and it'll attach. And the same goes for holding down the shift key and detaching. Tip number 19, pinning nodes. When you click on a node, it shows up in your inspector. But when you click on another node, it replaces the first one. The first one's gone and you see the, the second one only. But what if you wanted two nodes open in your inspector at the same time? You can do that by pinning one of them. So let's take this first merge and hit this button here to pin it. And now hit the second one. And now you can see both of them are open in my inspector. This is helpful if you're comparing values or entering values manually and you need to have both of them open, as well as for pick whipping. Let's say the angle of the first merge needs to be connected to the angle of the second merge. So I would put an equal to sign here take the pick whip and pick whip it to the other angle. Tip number 20, ordered macro. The order in which you choose the nodes when making a macro matters. Let's take this lower third for an instance. This is one of the lower thirds from the Avalon pack. Let's say you want to make a macro out of it. You would choose all your nodes in a composition and then click on macro create macro. As you can see, these nodes are appearing in the order in which I chose them. So text mass one is first, then the second one, and final output is all the way at the bottom next to the keyframe stretcher. But this can be pretty cumbersome when making the macro, because all we need is the two names and the color of the band here. So this is how you would do it. Hold down control to choose the first text, then the second text, then the box, which is the color in the middle. Then you would choose the rest of the notes in any order you want. Right click, create macro. Now you can see that the text is on top, the second text, then the box, and then all the nodes that you don't really need. And this is very convenient when writing macros because the whole point of writing the macro is taking a bunch of nodes 
and only opening two or three of them up for editing. Tip number 21, slider increments. Let's look at this composition. If I wanted to move the contrast by the normal amount, I would just move it with my mouse like that. If I wanted to move the slider in very small increments, one-tenth of the normal amount, I would hold down the control key. And if I wanted to move the slider 10 times faster than the normal, I would hold down the shift key. There you have it, a cool slice of fusion tips to help you along. There's more coming, I promise. I'm Sadi, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.